Jewel Bots, are you ready to rock and We're roll? Ready to go. We've got some programmable friendship bracelets, so uh, take it away. Six minutes. Hi, judges. I'm Sarah. This is Scott and George, and we're Jewelbots. I have been a coder since I was 12 years old. Since then, I've had the awesome experience of an amazing career in software from starting a nonprofit that's taught tens of thousands of women to code called Girl Develop It to becoming a CTO of the Levo League and Flatiron School. From the beginning, I've been working hard to inspire as many women as possible to join this field. Here is the problem. We're all used to seeing awesome high-tech toys like this built for boys and stuff like this made for girls. This is Baby Alive. She is arguably one of the hottest toys of the holiday season 2015. What makes Baby Alive special? She shits Play-Doh. This is what we make for girls. This is awful and unfair. Girls are just as smart and they deserve a lot better. And that's why we made Jewel Bots. Jewel Bots are made from the stuff girls ask for. We've talked to over 200 girls around the nation and asked them, what is important to you? And we've heard from them friendship, their friends, and communication. And they're made out of higher tech stuff than anything you or I have. JewelBots patent pending mesh network means JewelBots is the first wearable device to communicate from device to device. That means girls don't need a mobile phone in order to use and program their JewelBots. Okay, time for the demo. Using either their device or phone, users can set their friendships. Using the device, they can put it into pairing mode and put their friends into one of eight friendship color groups. So these two jewel bots, their friend, they just got their jewel bots and they want to pair them. So a long press on the device puts it into pairing mode, at which time it'll start cycling through the colors that are available uh, to ch select from. In this case, they're choosing that they would like to be green with each other. So a successful click on there makes them shine a bright, uh, rapid pattern of green to show it's successfully connected, and they're now in the green friendship group. And then the Jewelbots glow green because they're nearby each other. When girls are together, their bracelets match. The more friends that are in the same color group are nearby, their bracelets become brighter. When all the girls in the same group are together, their bracelets explode with rainbow party animations. And that's not even the most exciting part. Jewelbots can be used for, to send messages, so girls can send each other secret messages in their own languages. Jewelbots are a new technology for an age-old process, sending secret messages among girls. You can use the Jewelbot to customize lights and vibrations to be any type of message that you'd like to send to your friends. In this case, this friend has a double tap message that sends a very strong, bright light to her friend because, oh my gosh, the cute boy's at my locker and you need to get here right now. <laughs> uh, and that's not even the best part. The best part is that Jewel Bots are completely open source. So girls can code them to do whatever they imagine. So inside the Jewel Bot is a micro USB port. So you can connect it to the computer and use the Arduino programming language to add custom effects and interactions with your Jewel Bot. This example came from one of our young brand ambassadors who wanted to know if she needed to grab her umbrella on the way out to school. So the code that's uploaded on this bracelet checks the weather app five minutes before she needs to leave and looks up the precipitation forecast. If it's gonna be nice out, it just glows a pleasant yellow to let her know that it all is clear. However, if it's been like Vegas, it's gonna glow blue, it's gonna flash, it's gonna vibrate, and it's gonna remind her to grab that umbrella on the way out the door. You could extend this example further to make the, the amount of rain forecast make it buzz louder or vibrate faster so that you, maybe you need to grab your boots as well as your umbrella out when you head out the door. So you code a Jewelbot just like you would an Arduino, the same language as the same libraries. You plug it in with a micro USB. This is just one of the ideas we've gotten from our 100 ambassadors around the world who are super excited about Jewelbots and sharing our message. Jewelbots are also COPA compliant, so the girls can communicate with each other completely safely. Jewelbots come with interchangeable charms and bands sold separately. 
Girls can collect and trade their favorite limited edition designs and characters. Jewelbots are sold online for $69 for one, $99 for the two pack, and $139 for the Bestie three pack, which is by far our biggest seller. Since opening up sales online a few months ago, we've sold over $200,000 worth of Jewelbots. Today, we're super excited to share with you our first Jewelbots licensing agreements. First, with the Cartoon Network. This year, Jewelbots is partnering with the Powerpuff Girls to bring you custom charms and bands. So Bubbles, Blossom, and Bubble Buttercup, Buttercup will all be rocking their jewel bots and coding. Secondly, with Google, first is part of their Made With Pro Code program, and then with more announcements to be made in 2016. We're one part PhD, two parts entrepreneur, four parts developer, and all on fire to make jewel bots into a massive business and brand. Today only, by using the code TechCrunch, you can save $5 off your order of jewel bots and get a free introduction to wearables kit sold online. Wrap it up. Wrap it up. OK, if you're excited about a world where every girl feels empowered to become an engineer, come join us. All right, jewel bots. <laughs> Throwing over to you, the judges. Chris, this looks like something you'd love to wear. I have lost letters. Um, I, I wonder, so I wonder how useful they are if you only have one of them. And I wonder what I can, what I can afford to get one for all the girls in the class. And I wonder why it's not an app. Why is it a physical thing? So there is also an app the girls can use to set their friendships. Um, what we've, we talked to a lot of girls, and what we've heard from them is they love this physical manifestation of a product, an accessory that they can wear. As far as the individual experience, we've worked hard on that because it is a friendship bracelet, and that kind of stinks when you don't have any friends. Um, so the jewel bots can be used to send notifications, or you know, if I have a new Instagram follower, like Scott said, if it's going to rain, it'll tell me to grab an umbrella. So there's lots of other things you can do with a jewel bot that doesn't include friends. So I'm hugely passionate about inspiring girls in tech, so congrats for focusing on an area that is so incredibly important. I, death to the pink aisle. <laughs> um, so, but my question is, you know, I think of my eighth grade daughter, uh, you know, she's a coder, she's kind of geeky. Um, if she, you know, I would love to have exposed her to this, but I'm not necessarily sure she would have been excited about the jewelry angle. Um, yeah. And I know that this is just a stepping off point and you're trying to uh, you know, uh, attract any type of, of girl who might not otherwise be interested. Um, but I'm curious, how, what have you learned from girls who are actually using it? Because I, I worry a little bit about, it sounds really great, but it, it you know, kind of does, unless you're coding it and hacking it, it sort of does one thing really well. Um, and so how are you getting girls to stick with it and, and then code, you know, and get a higher sort of a percentage of girls who then go to start hacking it? Yeah. Uh, and then what's next? Like, where do you move beyond that? Yeah, that's a really great question. So first of all, um, we've thought a lot about how to motivate. So 20, as of last year, 25% of all wearables were worn after three weeks, which is the worst retention rate I've ever heard in my life, which is terrifying. So we've thought a lot about... A, the experience. Basically, girls unlock functionality over time. So when you first get your device, it's not going to talk to your Instagram. But by adding friends and or using it over time, you'll be able to unlock that functionality. One thing, so the way that we're going to get girls to code it, initially, we thought we'd have to fool them into it. Initially, when we talked to girls about coding, they were like, oh, that's not my thing. But this month, if you look at the color of Seventeen magazine, it is all about coding. Now when we go to schools, we talk to girls, they hear the coding part and they freak out. So that, I mean like, that's so exciting for us because they want the coding part now. They want something for them. There's nothing for them yet. So um, I'm excited. I think this is great, um, you know, philosophically and tangibly. My, uh, a couple questions. So um, when you said that they can click it a couple times and then the other girl will say, oh my God, this boy is cute over here. Did they have to in advance agree to their like Morse code that they would be on the same page about? Yeah, and that's something that they do all the time. When we talk to them, when these girls we 
I, they do this stuff all the time. One pair of girls we talked to, they learned American Sign Language so they could talk right. to each other around adults, um, and adults wouldn't know what they were talking about. Right. So they do this already. So uh, just an idea, um, but to potentially open source this, so you put it out on the cloud, so every girl's Morse code can be put in there, and then everybody can trade different languages, and then, yeah, you're on top of that. Great. Every part of so, is open source. Yeah. Um, one little suggestion, even though your partner is great, um, if he was an 11-year-old girl, that would be really awesome because there's an element of usability that I was not, uh, you didn't cross the chasm with me there because you kind of explained it to me, so I believe you. But I just wanted to believe that an 11-year-old girl would just like enjoy working with all this. So that's just like a small suggestion. My last question is more of Bring an 11-year-old girl to Vegas, please. Yes. Well, it doesn't, have to, it doesn't have to be Vegas. It's more just in general. Um, a few years from now, let's say five years from now, you're huge. This is like totally awesome. You're a billion dollar company. Can you explain to me what that looks like? Yeah. So, and you asked about this a little bit as well. So one thing about Jewelbots is that they're, the licensing with interchangeable charms and bands is huge. Every day we get an email from a mother that says, this is great. When are you going to make one for my son? He really wants one. So, I mean, we're working on that. And the different characters, the, the different... Um, the different brands, that's exciting. After that, we're starting with a new method of communication with this age group, right? So we're used to needing our cell phones. They communicate in a very different way than we do. So if they get comfortable communicating over a mesh network, communicating in their own languages, we just want to grow older with them. So what that looks like is a world where we don't have to depend on our cell phones to communicate. You mentioned an ambassador program. To your, you know, why don't you have an 11-year-old up here with you? So it sounds like you, you are empowering some of your young customers to be leaders in this. Can you say a little bit more about what you mean by that? Yeah, so it's been really exciting. We didn't expect the rush of people, parents and girls, signing up for the ambassador program. So right now it, takes the, it comes to fruition with different ideas that come to us, different hacks. Uh, with our wearables kit, we've been featuring the different hacks from different girls that go online and build stuff. They get interviewed by us. They get featured. We're really trying to make it so these girls that are creating and building are front and center. Um, and that's been really neat. Yeah. Do you know the folks at Code.org? Uh, barely, but yeah. The, the no, only reason no, I ask well, is yeah. because they're trying to um, put coding into education at a younger age across America. And it be really interesting to try to layer this in as part of that application. Yeah. Yeah, that would be awesome. That's it, unless someone has something crucially important. Okay, give it up for Jewelbots. And we go to that fun part where we wait for the other company to set up. Again, CES Crunch is what you're using to chat with me. Or, you know, you guys could just shout things out, too. I mean, we're here. We're live. Things get messy. What do you guys feel? Biggest concerns? Highlights from the last company? Anything stand out that's exciting? Chris, you're so pensive. Well, I, you know, I, I love the idea. And, I'm, you know, I, I spend all my weekends with my daughters trying, you know, trying things that will resonate with them. Um, I like the physical, physicality. They, they, they like physical things. Um, I, I wish I didn't actually touch it. Um, you know, uh, Do you want me to grab you one? Yeah, if you, if you could. Yeah. Uh, Jewel Bots, could you bring us uh, one or two of those bracelets real quick? Chris wants to play with it. So they looked a little bit big. I'll take two. Why not? You think it looks big? It, it, also, it was kind of hard to see the lights because of yeah. the lights on the stage. It was hard to see them uh, glowing. So, you know, I'm just trying to sell this to my, um, you know, my, my 11-year-old. And I'm not sure that she would. So she, the first test is going to be, is it, is it something she wants to wear? Yeah, is what it, is, is, no, is it normally pretty, on her wrist, though? Does she wear a lot of jewelry? Uh, she, yeah, we, we make um, charm bracelets every weekend. Um, cool. You know, we, we, do, you know, we do metal, and we do cricket, you know, sort of um, paper craft, and we do 3D printing, and, you know, we'll do everything. This one's a little sort of plasticky and, and big right now, so she might argue that it's not pretty enough uh, to wear. Um, I'm sure that's fixable, but that's, I just kind of think of selling it. What do you, what do you think? I had a little bit of that reaction as well, and, and I do think, you know, you're go the team's going after a wide demographic, and I think this appeals to my five-year-old more than it will my 13-year-old, and my 13-year-old is a, a real geek, and she wants tech that her mom and dad have, and so I think there probably is an aspect of this that if you can make it look more high-tech, but still relevant to her age group, that would More like an Apple Watch. 
Yeah, but it doesn't have to, you know, but it could have this level of functionality and be accessible to her, but just look a little more sophisticated. I know she would be, you know, kids aspire to be more adult-like in that sense um, oftentimes. So, uh, you know, I, I think a range of those things would probably be helpful. Cool. I think we're actually... We're ready to go unless you okay. want to chat all, about it. All I was going to say is I think the potential uh, age group is probably a little lower, you know, like right when they start understanding how to do Seven this stuff, eight. so maybe not teenagers already. But uh, the last thing is I, I don't think their core competency is going to be the actual bracelet and the actual plastic. I think they'll want to focus on the application and figure out how to create the network and the brand, and really there'll be partners who will come up with different products and accessories. I think there could be a whole, you know, line of accessory partners. Cool.